these memories are coming back exodus or ethnic cleansing of kashmiri pandits from kashmir valley even about 4 lakh anything between 4 to 5 lakh so 3 and a half to 5 lakh people were driven out from their own country and became refugees in their own country much before the term ethnic cleansing became uh, sort of well known or familiar uh, in parts of europe and the balkans it happened in india and unlike there where it was done with the minority this uh, uh, this was a local minority in the state but not the minority community in the countries to that extent this becomes even more remarkable now there is much discussion and it will go on now for some time about what exactly happened who was to blame etc so i'm not going into all of that i'm just giving you a set of dates and tell you what happened and leave it to you in the classical cut the clutter uh, uh, formula arrive at your own conclusions there, so there are those who blame the congress for it a lot of them do it there are those who might blame bp singh for it there are those who might blame pakistan for it or the kashmiri politicians but let me tell you just uh, it's a very popular expression this this chronology so i am not talking of chronology of the future what might happen uh, because on that there can be uncertainty and arguments and doubts i'm talking about chronology of the past of what happened so first of all go back to early 1975 early 1975 is when Mrs Indira Gandhi and Sheikh Abdullah signed their new accord whereby Sheikh Saab takes power in Kashmir now i will not go into the de detailed story of how long he lasted and what happened and then he passed away and then Farooq uh, took power but that phase continued generally till 1984 so our next date is 2nd july 1984 and i'll tell you why so under sheikh saab uh, it looked like there was a lot of resistance uh, to the accord so he did take the state towards a little bit of islamization and some of his speeches around that time were not something uh, that would have been in the spirit of the accord but he was playing local politics as he always did he could always play two sides against the third and he was doing a little bit of that even now then 2nd july 1984 important date that is when farooq abdullah's government was dismissed by the congress party it was dismissed by the congress party on uh, many allegations including that they were carrying out excesses on congress workers in fact that was one of the uh, major stories i reported out of kashmir for india today i was sent there uh, it was winter time and i i found a lot of congress workers with bandages and uh, and arms uh, li li limbs in uh, plaster casts so after that farooq abdullah was dismissed and in a very cynical operation extremely cynical operation farooq's brother in law gm shah popularly no popularly known as gul shah not really such a likable guy uh, he was installed as chief minister partly to spite the abdullahs and partly because he thought he will do the center's bidding he did no such thing in fact he ran quite a rogue administration he soon started spreading the bogey of islam is in danger he started much more aggressive islamization in february 1986 the first hindu muslim riots took place he allowed uh, muslims a mosque uh, place in the secretariat so hindus protested in jammu there were riots then there was a sort of chain reaction of riots and uh, many temples were uh, pillaged and destroyed in the kashmir valley so that was the one really big crisis on 12th of march 86 that is the next date jagmohan dismissed the gulsha government now jagmohan is the champion sort of a uh, dismisser if i may say so coin a word of government in kashmir now people identify Jagmohan with the BJP the fact is that the two terms that Jagmohan spent as governor in Kashmir he was not the BJP's appointee at least not directly so the first term he was the congress's appointee that was a full 5 year term and that's when these dismissals took place and that's when things were going from bad to worse you can blame him you may not blame him maybe, maybe this was bound to happen because 1970 980 is when afghan jihad was really picking up and pakistani army isi under ziaul haq were seeing 
that they could use the same methods in Kashmir as well, as long as they Islamized Kashmir to their idea of Islam, which is Wahhabi Islam. And that's when all the money started coming into Wahhabi mosques and uh, the change in the character of Kashmiri Islam started taking place. So many complex things were happening at that time. I am just giving you the chronology. Uh, so 12 March 1986, Gulshah government was dismissed. State was under president's rule, Jagmohan. 1987, elections were held. Those elections were famously rigged big time. So many of the people who became rebels later, say Gilani had uh, no, filed his nomination, Yasin Malik uh, was a campaigner. Many of these people who were then together in something called Muslim United Front, which was a kind of precursor of Hurriyat. They were contesting in that election. Maybe 10 or 12 would have won. Even if they had won, they would have done no damage to India. But out of arrogance of the Congress party and Farooq Abdullah, that election was fully rigged. These people lost the election, became even more disillusioned and then became full-time separatists. So 1987 rigged election is the other key date. Then you come to 14 September 1989. Now elections are rigged. Farooq is running the state. He has very little credibility. Meanwhile, MUF people have become more separatist. JKLF has become much more active. JKLF has the pretense of being secular and uh, being driven by Kashmiriyat, but it is not. The essential impulse from deep inside is still Islamist. So, 14 September 1989, JKLF people carry out the first targeted assassination of the Kashmiri Pandit, that is Tikaram Taplu. So 14 September 1989, India is heading for elections. Uh, Ram Janbhumi is now becoming a big issue. BJP is making big gains. Rajiv Gandhi is on the decline. 2nd December 1989, again note this date and all these will run on the, on the screen. 2nd December 1989, VP Singh is sworn in as India's Prime Minister. Now. I've said this before and I will say this in greater detail at some point when the, uh, when the uh, opportunity arises. Why I think and how B.P. Singh's government was the weakest government in India ever in our history on all issues of security, internal and external. And that's not just because it was an oddball combination. It was also because of the way uh, maybe the prime minister there, uh, his temperament was. So his government appointed Mufti Muhammad Saeed as the Home Minister. Through 11 months of VP Singh's government, Mufti Muhammad Saeed of Kashmir was the Home Minister. So what is the first thing that Mufti Muhammad Saeed wanted done? He wanted Farooq's government to be dismissed. And for Farooq's government to be dismissed, he had to find the right kind of governor. So meanwhile, uh, General K.V. Krishna Rao had been sent as governor for some time, but demand rose that, oh, send a strong governor to Kashmir. So soon enough, events took such a shape that Jagmohan was sent there, but not just now. Before Jagmohan was sent, something else happened. On 8 December 1989, just six days after the new government came into being, VP Singh government and Mufti Muhammad Saeed became the Home Minister of India, his daughter Rubaiya, then a 23-year-old medical student, she was kidnapped. She was kidnapped by JKLF terrorists and they demanded the release of a bunch of their own people in return. Five key terrorists were returned within four days. And Rubaiya Said came back. Now that was the first big capitulation by the Indian state, by the Indian state authority in Kashmir. Remember, one of the people released in that group was Mushtaq Ahmad Latram or Zargar who was later called, who, who had the nickname of Latram. He was released. He was again arrested in 1992, charged with many murders, many terrorist murders. And yet again, with IC-814 hijack, among the terrorists whose release the Pakistanis or the Jaish-e Mohammed demanded was also Mushkar, Mushtaq Ahmad Zargar or Latram. He apparently now lives in Muzaffarabad, quite like a free man. So these, are, these were key terrorists who were released in return for Rubaiya Sayyid, the Home Minister's daughter. So Home Minister, the central government completely lost authority at that time. This was between 8 and 12 December 1989. Keep marking this. Then stuff began to go worse in Kashmir. Uh, an anti-Hindu uh, sort of movement was building up. Posters were being put up. 
uh, advertisements appear in, appeared in a couple of local Urdu papers without any attribution as to who they were coming from, like announcements saying that all Kashmiri Pandits should leave the valley or they will be killed or whatever. Uh, it was never found out on whose behalf those were being put out. So, panic spread. It was in the middle of all that panic that VP Singh's government succumbed to Mufti Muhammad Said's uh, pressure to appoint Jagmohan as governor yet again. So, first five years, Jagmohan was Congress's appointed governor in Kashmir. And second time, he was the VP Singh government's appointed governor in Kashmir. Remember, VP Singh's government came, up, came into power in opposition to the Congress party. Uh, their only enemy was Congress. All opposition parties in India has got together to defeat the Congress. His party was like a, uh, his main party, the Janta Dal, there had about 100 something, 150, 60 uh, MPs. It was sustained because it was supported from the outside by the BJP, by Mr. Advani's BJP. That government could not have lasted one day without the BJP. So, it's possible that the BJP also nudged VP Singh to appoint uh, Jagmohan. Jagmohan became governor on 19th January 1990, remember. Farooq had said that because Jagmohan had dismissed him in the past also, he didn't trust Jagmohan and he will resign if Jagmohan is appointed governor. So, 19th Jagmohan was appointed governor. 20th of January 1990, one more important date, Farooq Abdullah resigned. So, state again came under president's rule. This was Jagmohan's rule. And now by this time, the exodus was set. Now, you will need many commissions of inquiry to figure out whether something could have been done, could not have been done. It was too late for a new governor to come in. Uh, conspiracy theories range from uh, Farooq having uh, helped the militants to drive the pundits out to Jagmohan having encouraged to leave, but I will not buy any conspiracy theories. You draw your own conclusions. I am just giving you the date. So then what happened? The essential characteristic of VP Singh's government was left liberal. Uh, it was full of Lohiai, former Lohiaites, left liberals. And they said, we don't like it. Jagmohan is going and beating up people. So Kashmir also needs a healing touch. So that government did something even nuttier. And I mean, it couldn't be nuttier than that. While Jagmohan had been sent on the demands of the BJP and pressure of the BJP to go and beat up the Kashmiris, George Fernandez, who was railway minister, was also given charge of Kashmir affairs. A special portfolio was created to go and apply the healing touch. So, George Fernandez was going to Kashmir uh, trying to promote artisanship, trying to promote tourism, trying to make sure that apples produced there were uh, bought at the right price. It's the same old problems. But you had this one fragile, short-lived government working at cross-purposes. Cross like that uh, Hindi film song, Kabhi Neem Neem Kabhi Shahed Shahed, but it doesn't work like that in politics. So, Jagmohan, the hard line, at the same time, George Fernandez, the soft line, and then come the next dates, and you come to May of the same year, 1990, things have gone so bad that Fernandez is not happy with what Jagmohan is doing. Jagmohan is not happy with what, with, what, with what Fernandez is doing. So, over a period of two or three weeks, both of them are removed. So, Fernandez is removed in June 1990 and Jagmohan is removed the last week of May 1990. So, once again, you are back to square one. By this time, Kashmir has gone to a stage from which it hasn't recovered since. And by this time, the expulsion or the exodus of the Kashmiri Pandits, one of the most tragic events in India's history, is fully over. It has not, it has never been reversed. And finally, on 10th of November 1990, VP Singh's really awful government fell. What happened after that? After that, Chandrasekhar's government came in with a very small number of MPs. This time, it was supported by the Congress from outside but there was no harmony between that government and the Congress from day one. Very soon, that government was pulled down by the Congress. India had fresh elections in the summer of 1991. It was in the middle of those elections that Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated. So, elections took place in two phases and those elections then led to the appointment of Narsimha Rao government. 
narsimha rao government then carried out the most brutal the toughest fight back on the part of the indian state both in punjab and kashmir which had both got completely messed up in vp singh and the chandrashekhar's year and a half so that is the chronology of what has happened once again draw your own conclusions but i will say one thing in one thing in uh, conclusion by way of my opinion whoever was responsible for it uh, whoever is guilty a lot of people are guilty at some point destiny will uh, settle its scores with them but essentially until a situation arises when the pandits can go back to their homes peacefully and are felt welcome not like these israeli settlements for jews which are protected all the time by the armed forces not like that unless that happens there will be no permanent peace in kashmir